Last video, we did some sail fishing, and now this video, our boat neighbors and their friends wanted to hop on board to learn some of those techniques specific to fishing under sail. Almost as fast as the cat catamaran, huh? Eh? If I concentrate. Hola, Igor. Hola. <laughs> You're coming fishing with us. You can sit here if you want, more comfortable. No, better you put here, yeah, 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 like that. You go up, and then uh -huh. uh, you let the rod do the work, not on the reel. Yeah. Go up and then down. And when you come down, come, well, start reel before, you start now already coming up. Here you go. Under a stone. I think so, yeah. Uh oh. You think I we're not gonna turn around? Yeah, we are gonna turn around. Are we gonna bring up lures? Yes. Okay. Can I give you this one second? Okay. Uh, I'm going to tack. Okay. The fish tried to escape by hiding under a rock. At first it felt like a normal fish, and now the lure feels like it's stuck onto something a little bit harder. Robbie let the line run out of the reel while we return the boat around. You can release more of the main if you want that. Okay. Yeah, we're going six knots with the current. Big fish, huh? Motherfucker! It's a big fish, huh? He come out by himself. Lucky, lucky, lucky. You don't want to let Igor pull it up? I don't know if you can. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hurry, 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 hurry. Okay, we're, we're, ah! we're going, okay, we're, we're, going <laughs> we're going as slow as we're going to go on this tack. Because the jib isn't doing anything. Oh, big fish. Look at, look at like, the big, big fish. Big fish, big fish, big fish. Big fish. I think we'll have one more here before. We talked about some specifics in the last two videos, including some vocabulary about sails, lines, and sailing upwind. Now we're going to focus on the helpers, the strength multipliers, some of the simple machines on our boat, winches. We have three sets of winches on our sailboat for three locations that sometimes require extra strength to work the lines. In the cockpit for working the forward sail sheets, on top of the pilot house for working the mainsail outhaul and the reefing, then also at the mast for helping the halyards, and it might also be fair to include the windlass which brings up the anchor as a winch. So on, on smaller boats, sometimes they use blocks and pulleys instead of winches. There's no real need for a winch because the forces on the boat are never great enough that you cannot physically manhandle in your sail. I mean, when we had my way, we had we had winches in the deck. I mean, we never used the winch handle on it, on them. On a 24 foot, we, we used to just pull this, the general in by hand, even when it was pretty windy. But for this boat? Yeah, no, this boat, even with a small sail, when the wind picks up, they are necessary. There's no way you're pulling. I tried the other day, I went like, Ugh! and it just <laughs> didn't budge. Up. First thing first about winches is that they always turn clockwise from left to right. Port side, starboard side, horizontal, upside down, left to right, no matter where the winch is, the winches are always clockwise. I don't think I've ever seen an anti-clockwise winch. So when you wrap rope around them, especially in higher loads, you want minimum three wraps, and then the fourth wrap goes around. These are self-tailing winches, so the rope bites in nicely. And like anything that is under tension, 
uh, watch your fingers. When you're putting rope, especially high loads, try not to put your hands at the back. You might get the, the rope falling under load and your fingers might get crushed. It's, so, it's always advisable to keep your hands at a distance from the winch while you wrap. So you wrap your winch nicely and you keep your hands out of the, out of the ways. A lot of people do this. And then when the rope pulls, you get your fingers caught. I usually do the first one by flick to hold. And then I put the second one and then the third one and then up. Same thing when you are releasing tension from a rope, it is always better to keep some distance and not hold the line too close because then you always chance you don't want to get your fingers stuck inside a winch. That is, that is danger number one is getting your fingers caught here. And another common place is when you're actually winching is the actually upwind side. You don't want this to happen to your fingers or anything else or a piece of your body or a t-shirt or something can get caught, caught in. This is where danger happens. And the other very important thing is when you winch is you want to keep yourself and other people clear from the full circumference of the winch handle in case one of the poles fails inside and this starts spinning really quickly. Like, I don't know if it was, if it, it will spin no, it won't spin, but sometimes when this, so when you winch, you shouldn't, you shouldn't winch close or have your face close. If something happens, the winch handle can come and hit you in the, in the face. So you want to be clear, you want to have enough space that if, if you let go of the winch handle and the winch handle decides to spin, you are clear. So have you experienced the pole? One time, yes. I have experienced one time, I was winching a winch one time and I let go and the winch just went like that. Both poles failed on the winch. The first one shattered and then the second one, a single pole wasn't strong enough to hold the load on the winch. And all attention came back, at came back at, and when the poles fail inside, the winch handle will turn. Three or four wraps on every winch or just our winch? Almost any winch is minimum three wraps because three wrap guarantees that when you take off the rope, it doesn't just slip out, out of your hand. Three wraps will hold almost anything. It will never outpower you and you can then use your hand to, to let some rope go out. So when are you putting your hand in there? On the, the only time you really put your hand he on the drum near the rope is when you're le letting rope out. Instead of just releasing rope like this, you flat palm with your fingers out and you use your palm to, to, ha to help the rope ease off sometimes. When you want to stop it from o overlapping itself, you want to make sure that the, the entrance of the rope is not higher than, than its first circle. Like if this rope was higher like that, the rope would, it would overwrap itself. And how might you unwrap it if you tangled it up there? First things first, you want to try and remove tension from yes. the tension side. But if that's not possible. Yeah, usually you, you try and you, you undo it and, and undo other and put it on the other winch. If you can't yank it by hand, you put it on the other winch and you pull until it comes off. I've seen this get so bad that we had to cut ropes. Empty winches can be great when people know what they're doing. You have no, basically no feedback on how much strength you're putting on the winch. You need time to understand the noise, how the revolutions go down, and it is way easier to break something because with this winch handle, if you get into the limit, you, you can really feel the, the feedback. When it gets hard, you know, you have to like, uh, uh, you know, you know, when you know your limit, you know how much strength you're putting. You're putting your strength multiplied by, by whatever winch multiplies. When I take winch, you don't. You just press the button, This sucker got hit. I know because I just painted the black top with a uh, thing and there's already scratch marks on it, but we didn't hook anything. But he definitely got hit a few times. The sun came up, fishing time was over for the morning, and time to clean and eat our catch. The reef fish, the rest part, is the head for making soup. And then I have the head. That's one. You made all the fillets, but we're not going to waste the rest. Cover on and on the boil. Okay, muchas gracias, thank you very much. See you later.
The boat neighbor's three little kids even jumped on board enthusiastically to share a meal with us. Over the past several years, we've worked on so many other important projects that we haven't made the time for the smaller, finer things, like cleaning and greasing the winches. These particular winches usually have like a key to just fit in here and turn it around, but we don't have it, so it's gonna be chisel and hammer. Ours have a simple screw off top. Screw off top. Oof, they needed some. Um, How do you know that? Because of the rust? No, not much rust. Yeah, there's a little bit of rust on them and uh, also by the amount of dirt that's in them. Ugh. Most winches have a variation on these similar components. All of our two speed self tailing winches have a cap that screws off, a self tailing arm that is easily removed, off comes the drum, out comes the main spindle from the stem. The spindles that hold the gears in are removed. And that basically they hold in the gear edges. Uh, one is the high gear, one is the low gear. I'm looking if there's any like uh, burring or or just general wear and tear, but there seems to be no, no wearing. Yeah, these winches have been on the boat since it was built. And you don't think they look like they're in bad shape? No, not at all. I don't, but I don't feel any. Without any electronic or scientific instruments. Yep. Just there's like almost no wear on any of the parts or or on the gear. I can see a little bit of wear on the gears. You can see where it, some work use, but no. No significant. And then finally the palves with their tiny springs inside that have to be carefully taken apart. In between all these components, of course, are various gaskets and seals that need to be removed with great care. So it goes like this. We cleaned out and examined all the parts for possible corrosion, cracks, or wear, but in the end all they needed were a good scrub, then an application of grease, oil, and lubricant. Yeah, this is basically what, what makes you decide where on the winch you want the, the rope to come out. So when it comes out of the auto feed, it comes out more or less here in the cockpit. We put it a bit more there so it comes out naturally in the cockpit right here. <laughs> this way doesn't <laughs> doesn't make any noises. Is this not supposed to make a noise now? Yeah, it does make a noise. Hello pinto negro, entonces en el A fishing reel is kind of like a mini winch. Victor pull up the the first of the day. La Baraka, 100%. <laughs> this is Baraka Point. I don't like Barracuda. This is very rapid, man. Careful with the teeth. Ah. I just got the dientes.
It would be the best for, for sailing out. Going 360 degrees around the island, we were able to visit all points of sail on this trip. You make question in the in the reel. You just try to bring up the fish. So basically, this much is bring up the rod a little bit, and as you go down, you reel. 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 Yeah. That's how you gain your line back. Real, real So it's always maintaining. You don't go like this. Too much. Yeah. You don't want it to stay straight. When you go down, you want to maintain the arch of the. Of the you want to sube. The iron pencils are down. The 45-50 degrees maximum. Después, yeah. 